Hey guys, welcome back on TV. You want to start your business in China for Chinese people and you're not Chinese. This is possible. Lucas did it. He's got his startup just right here in Shanghai. Let's hear him. Uh, so my name is Lucas Engelhardt. I'm an American who's been living in China for six years and I'm currently the CEO of Delivery Hero China. So what is Delivery Hero? We are a website for ordering food delivery, restaurant delivery from nearby restaurants online. Uh, where I act as an aggregator for restaurants that deliver themselves and also for third-party delivery companies uh, that deliver restaurants that don't deliver themselves. And uh, for consumers that means more choices, uh, more ratings and, and online reviews and a more convenient way to order food. For restaurants we act as a, a marketing platform uh, for them to reach more consumers. So we don't have our own delivery guys, we're not a delivery company, we're simply uh, an online channel uh, which we believe is the future of ordering food. Yeah, uh, well that's a work in progress. <laughs> that's uh, clearly for us the, you know, the biggest key to success. Um, we do everything you just mentioned. So it's a mix of, of online, uh, whether it be SEM, like uh, I do in Google AdWords, uh, also banner ads and, and partnering with strategic websites to get traffic. Uh, also offline, so uh, flyers, uh, leveraging restaurants and, and you know, co-branding stuff with them. Um, and also you know, a mix, so uh, social media marketing where we have um, our Weibo account is pretty good, uh, a Facebook page, uh, and giving away you know, offline events, giving away coupons, giving away tickets, stuff like that, partnering with, with community events. So um, initially the focus for us is just be the brand out there and people know, you know who we are and that this service even exists. I think it's, uh, you know, it takes a bit of time to educate the market on what is an, you know, an online food order in sight. And they think, you know, we understand you're not a restaurant, uh, but often people immediately think, well, you must be a delivery company. You know, you know, we're actually, we're, we're not, we're a marketing channel. So um, that's where we are now, but um, we're really excited about how people seem to, to enjoy the service, uh, as judged by the fact that they can reorder. And so, um, you know, when people come back, then we, we must be providing some sort of value, something that they like. Yeah. So we have a team of uh, about 10 now, and uh, I'm the only former, so in the office we're dealing all of speaking all in Chinese. Um, I think it's very important that if you're going to, to try to sell to local Chinese that you be a local team. Uh, no matter how much time you spend in China, uh, I don't think Lao Wai like myself should try to kid ourselves to think that we know the market better uh, than people who grew up here. And so I really uh, rely on the team heavily, uh, not just for marketing uh, and for product and branding all those things. Of course, I try to input uh, some of my gifts, some of my knowledge, uh, and some best practices from overseas. And uh, it's great that we can look at Delivery Hero and the other markets they're in and, and, and kind of you know, cherry pick ideas to, to localize. Um, but it really has to be different. I think that's where most foreign companies make a mistake when they enter China, is to underestimate the differences and how unique China is as a market. Uh, so. I think the important thing is to, to have a strong local team uh, and give them the autonomy to, to execute and, and, and respond quickly. Uh, and uh, so we, we focus a lot on promoting a good team culture. Uh, once a week we have a team lunch, which we, uh, we order food delivery, so it's a way for people to try you know, all the different restaurants we have. Um, we also do some outside of work events. Uh, and it's really important for me, I, which is again something I think that a lot of Chinese companies are a bit weaker at, is developing this very comfortable team culture where people feel it's okay to ask each other for help uh, and, and to work together. I really try as much as possible to keep politics out of it so that uh, individuals aren't you know, trying to, to one-up each other. Uh, what I tell them every day is, look, we're, we're a small company. If we all work hard together and we 
we fight, we can uh, make this successful, and it's going to be great for everyone. It's going to be the upside is going to be spread around mm -hmm. day one. Um, I think the employees are quite appreciative of the fact that, that we're while building the business, we're really taking a lot of time to, to give them personal coaching and, and help them improve their skills, uh, their language, or technical, etc. And um, I think that, that that helps keep them more loyal. Of course, there's this culture in China of you know, jumping companies every six months to a year uh, for a small raise each time. Um, but I think um, so far, at least, we've been done a good job at, at, at keeping people loyal and keeping them interested. Uh, we'll see. Hopefully, we continue that going forward. trying very hard to make it a data-driven business uh, and to make decisions not based on our gut instinct but on, on what does the, the data tell us. Uh, if we make mistakes, we want it to be those sort of uh, kind of engineering mistakes. And um, I think that um, uh, for us that means tracking uh, restaurant growth, uh, you know, how do we expand, what areas of the market do we target. Uh, consumer growth, what channels are people coming through, you know, what is the cost of acquiring new customers, uh, how do we, we grow the business in a smart way. I think that that's something that traditionally a lot of Chinese companies have been weak at, uh, which is constantly testing and refining the model. Uh, the successful companies have done a great job at it. Um, I think Ctrip, for example, has, has really done an excellent job of maybe testing their site uh, to make it really streamlined and easy to use. But I think the old model for building, building internet businesses is kind of, we have this dream, we build it, and then we hope people come and use it. Uh, and the new model, that is you know, raised with global leaders, lean startup, etc., uh, is you know, as soon as possible, try to test it and, and, and look at you know, the indicators and, and get feedback and, and, and change on the fly. And so uh, it's not easy to do at first. I think it, it takes really a, a bit of a mind shift. Um, but for us, uh, it's very important. Uh, I think it's especially hard in China to recruit because there's so much pressure uh, for, on young people to get a safe job. The parents say, go work for that big multinational company where you have a brand that we know and you know, save money, get married, buy an apartment, blah, 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 blah. And there's nothing wrong with that, but um, you know, that's not how you build a startup. And so uh, what we've tried to do is to leverage this, this analysis of the data and say, you know, hey guys, today was a record day in terms of orders. So this week, you know, look at how much we've grown week on week. Uh, of course, it may not be a, a huge victory, um, but you can see the, the very visible progress. Uh, I think that it's the importance of momentum and uh, moving forward can't be overstated. Uh, uh, if you're only thinking about the big picture, you know, are, are we the market leader yet? Are we profitable yet? Um, you know, you run out of, uh, out of uh, enthusiasm. So you really have to keep you know, keep pushing it uh, and, 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 and chart your KPIs and, and, and say, you know, are we hitting them week by week? You know, this is, it's not, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint.